بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي ونسلم على رسوله الكريم أما بعد والعصر الله جل جلاله أما نواله has taken an oath of time on time through the ages by the declining day by the swift movement of time in al insan la fi khusr verily man is at loss this bani adam the son of adam this human being is at loss through the movements of time so we find that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us life allah has given us health allah has given us wealth allah has given us different amanat and trusts and these trusts needs to be utilized properly so this is such an important surah of the quran alama tabarani has mentioned that sahaba radiyallahu anhum was such that idha taqaya when two of the sahaba used to meet they would not separate until they would recite surah asr in its entirety to each other so just the fact that you remind each other imam shafi ahlali used to say law tadabbara an-nas hadhihi as-sura lawasiyatuhum if people had to just ponder on the sura it would have been sufficient for them so everybody is at loss but there's an exception illa alladhina amanu wa amilu as-salihati wa tawassaw bil haqq to recommend truth to each other, to enjoin good, to to enjoin each other, to obedience, to forbid evil, to employ each other towards patience, staying away from guna, haram, evil, etc. So these amanat needs to be preserved, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is giving us a strategy. This is a strategy for preservation of our life on this world and in the year after. So again, strategy telling you this is the problem. This is where your strength should be. This is where you should be focused as well. So the people of Iman are strategists. They focused. They have direction in life with regards to the A'mal, with regards to the Akhirah, with regards to the preservation of their wealth, their family. It is very important and we should, we should, we should not be taken aback by the invitation of dunya. So people are experts with regards to eating on their food, uh, apps, technology, gadgets, etc, etc. But the important things of life, we should not be blurred and, and, and lose focus of what I should be doing. So get caught in the wrong avenue. Like they say, there was a husband standing in a bathroom scale and he was struggling to hold his stomach in. So the wife noticed the husband and uh, she made a remark. She found an opportunity. She said, uh, I don't think so. That's going to help. It's not going to reduce your weight. The scale is going to give you the same weight. So the husband says it does. It does. She was shocked. See what you're talking about. He said, it's the only way I can read the numbers. It's the only way. I can read the numbers. So the people of Iman have vision, focus, they learn to follow the instructions of Allah and His Rasul. The instructions are clear, Quran is clear, Hadith is clear, but we follow instructions. Likewise for preservation, clear, clear instructions, but how much lesson do we take? So we know a lot, but how much do we take lesson in practice? That's the question. That's that's the thing which we need to be concerned about. Let's say there was a woman who was overweight, a doctor put on a diet. So he said, I want you to eat regularly for two days, then skip a day. Repeat the procedure for two weeks. And the next time I see you, you would have lost around five kilos. So when this lady returned two weeks later, she lost 20 kilos. Doctor was shocked, baffled. I mean, he's, he's treated many patients, but... Uh, never treated somebody who lost so much kilos in such a short span of time. So he asked her, did you follow my instructions? So she said, yes, to the T. But on the third day, I thought, I feared I was going to drop dead. 
the doctor again and said, I said, you mean from hunger? So she said, no, from skipping. No, from skipping. So the hidayat, the, the, the guidelines which we have been taught, which we've been told, we need to follow these guidelines and, and, and take lesson. So any person busy with uh, leaving the house, we have to leave the house for zururiyat, for our salat, etc. So we should have a habit of being vigilant around us, our environment. From the moment you leave, you need to notice people, cars, things around you. And uh, even items, if in a situation on your travel, so you know you've got a specific route every day, if you are attacked on that route, what you need to do to draw attention. So let's say you pass in by some store cafes, you know that you'll notice the alarm system, you'll notice the CCTV camera there or not. So would they perpetrate it or not there? That's a question mark again. Would you have to break the windows, get the alarm, the sirens, the sensors there, etc. Which neighbor's house, the wall is easy to, be, to climb or you can access or there's a bell, etc. So your daily route, whether you are walking, whether you are traveling, at which point, so mentally, daily, all our routes. So when you get to the store, for example, a person has a shop. What's the first thing do I do? Where do I park? Do I have the same routine of parking every day? Can they plot my movements? Do I just lock the car without checking the doors are locked? Do I just, am I oblivious? So which world am I in? If a person is in a situation and uh, the, the assailants, uh, there's a compromise. So do you try to reason with them? Let's say if it's a kidnapping, do you try to reason with the person? Are you trying to, but he's panicking. He's, he's, he's worried, he wants, he wants to grab you and go. So, are you doing something that may spur him on to beat you, to, 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 to harm you, etc. in that situation? Yeah, if uh, you're trying to buy time to signal for help or counter attack, etc. That's a different story, but there's no fixed rule on every situation. Sometimes people keep their wallets in their back pocket, they keep their phones very visible, um, very, very negligent. So, we, uh, we, we display leave bags in, in the car, leave it on the dash, leave valuable items visible. Uh, when a person is in a position of compromise and uh, you have your possessions, if you need to let it go, let it go. Um, the, 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 don't hold on to your things. If your life is, 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 uh, can be preserved, then, then preserve it. Likewise, uh, when you get into the vehicle as well, how much of the mirrors do you utilize? Uh, you, you drive in, do you, do you have a habit of having your uh, gas at half uh, level, quarter level? What's, what's your red light? Where, when, when do you become, uh, do you wait? Are you a last minute empty tank person, etc.? Are you waiting for the fuel to be on reserve? So you are a last minute person. So especially ladies should be very particular if for some necessity they need to leave and they drive in as well they should have sufficient fuel even simple things like uh, run flats so a lady driver should uh, make sure she has run flats she shouldn't be in a position where she has a flat tire she has to go outside there's a lot of scams and tricks where in the parking lots they ambush and, and put nails on the tires wait for you to get uh, a puncture and then infiltrate. So uh, simple things, if a person's been followed, what's now if you planned your route every day, where am I going to drive? So if after 10 seconds, 30 seconds, one minute, two minutes, three minutes, four minutes, uh, up to this point, if something happens, what's my protocol? If it's a city, uh, where the, where's the nearest fire station? Where's the police station? Where's uh, a route that I know that uh, I can escape where it would be complicated. I wouldn't put myself in a position where I could be ambu ambushed. Uh, if it's a kidnapping, they're going to come for you and, and, and trail you. Could, could, could they ambush you, put you in a position where they can grab you? Uh, so they want to get you off guard. Which, which friend is nearest to you? What, what emergency processes are, are you looking at? Which time of the night you travel in? Which businesses are open? Which petrol station could you go to? 
is it worthwhile going to a petrol station? Would they would they uh, relent? Would it be a deterrent, or would they engage? Uh, if you are walking, somebody's following you. Do you do you panic and do you run? Do you scream? Do you turn around and look at them? Make them know that you you watching them, so you know somebody's watching you. You 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 make them know before they pull the move. Um, where's the light sources at night? Where's uh, where's the uh, engagement point where there are more people where it's more busier? So each person should prepare an escape route for a threatening situation. And it's not necessarily on the road if a person is in their shop, if they go to uh, a mall, etc. Where's the escape routes? Where's the windows? Where's the doors? Where's the fire escapes? Where's gates? Where's the escalators? Where's the fences? Where's the walls? Where's bridges? Where's staircases? So, uh, and these escape routes need to be escape routes, not cornering routes where you get cornered and uh, you cannot escape. Then uh, barriers, so on your route as well, identify barriers, which if you need to uh, get away from that situation, then you need to get to safety. So any stuck structural uh, integrity, integral structure, any barriers, whether it's uh, doors, whether it's cars, whether it's uh, trash, dumpsters, um, trees, fences, walls, heavy machinery, vending machines, whatever it is, whatever. What can I use in my escape route that, that will save me, that will hinder them from catching me? What could I make as a barrier? And then in a situation, if a person is compromised, so besides your EDC items, which we discussed, but what can be a makeshift weapon uh, in that situation, which could be used for self-defense? So a person will have to see how can I evolve in this situation to, to use it to save uh, my life, to, to save my assets, etc. So a person knows, okay, in his vehicle he carries these items, what can I use, what should I keep? Uh, in the kitchen, what items are there? So a lady's alone at home, the husband's at work. What do you have? Do you have cutlery? Do you have uh, scissors? Do you have uh, uh, knife sets? What can be used? You've got a shoe. Can that shoe be used? So a certain shoe, which uh, can be very can injure somebody seriously. So in a situation, what uh, would you do? Sometimes you are traveling, you witness uh, a emergency situation. How much should you get involved? Sometimes you cannot decipher who's the victim and who's the attacker. So it's hard sometimes to, to, to identify the true situation. And sometimes you could harm yourself more than anything else and harm the, the other person as well. So then uh, when a situation is over, sometimes there's a violent assault, there's a confrontation, etc. And uh, now when a person is safe with themselves, their family, to do an inventory. So scan your torsos, your arms, your legs, hands, feet, for any signs of injury. Because when, he put, when the adrenaline kicks in, a person may be seriously injured and they do not even have a clue. Because your body shuts off, there's a shutdown uh, mechanism which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created. We know somebody who was shot five times, three in the stomach, two in the head, and uh, they did not even know they were shot. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made natural mechanisms. And did they say when you're in that situation, you have that one second, half a second, quarter second, maximum maybe three seconds. Use your, your adrenaline, your force, your insight. Allah has put that natural so don't go in a fear, in a panic and freeze. Uh, don't be beguiled. Don't, don't, don't consider them overwhelming you. You need to give it everything you got uh, and don't give up easily. So like we discussed previously, now in your route that you are traveling, you know, you've read the crime statistics in the area, you've uh, identified what's a common crime there, etc. So based on the demographics, based on the season, based on, on, on the region, the different variants of crime, you could, uh, on your route, go in and come in and plot what are possible scenarios 
the anyway person situation is over there was an attacker uh, they escaped so after checking yourself you need to write down you need to make notes of what is the height the weight the clothing the weapon the car model was there a license plate what is the color of the vehicle anything that you need to be taking note of and jotting down information because when a person is in shock sometimes they may forget a lot of information so first hand to train the brain and then sometimes we invite trouble to ourselves sometimes we have this fancy number plates customized plates etc so it's bringing attention to yourself to your family it can provoke uh, incidents on the road etc so uh, try to be simple straightforward um, show comes with a price likewise a person wears a t-shirt and uh, there are some remarks you might just find the wrong person it's automatically the fact that you had a statement on your t-shirt could promote and put you in a situation it could be a, a, a life-threatening situation some people who are in kung fu karate martial arts etc wear their uniform so now sometimes a person can interpret it as a challenge Sometimes a person will have an idea of, of, of what skill you have. So they will catch you off guard knowing what background. So the least, the less people know about you, uh, the better. And the least they can catch you and surprise. And you can surprise them, uh, surprise them even better. So catching them off guard. So sometimes uh, you need to familiarize, familiarize yourself what we call ambush zones. So in your daily travel you are going whether you walk into the masjid whether you're going to the mall etc or work what are the ambush zones where am i most risk at risk most so you know that they will exploit uh, that place so you need to be familiar uh, whether it's populated area unpopulated whether it's a dark area poorly lit area whether um, it is behind trees so how close do you walk uh, can somebody hide behind the tree can somebody hide how close you walk to building so at a corner somebody can be there to ready to ambush you and just grab you and and, and rob you or harm you likewise um, corners be very care careful of their doorways walls tables cars etc so possible ambush zones uh, when you are walking and when you are driving so uh, as an individual you need to profile your own self and uh, situational awareness but not only awareness but uh, preparedness as well so try try to do it now that uh, identify ambush zones in, in your vicinity and a good rule is that uh, plan to rob yourself and kidnap your own self so if you are going to plan somebody to kidnap you and rob you what would you have thought of doing think like the enemy think like the enemy so uh, when that processes come in then uh, that helps a person to be more vigilant and more aware like uh, simple things you're going to an elevator how close you stand to it how far away from the door you need to stand uh, you go to a public place first rule is never have your back towards the entrance a back to a place of compromise try to have your back to the wall the furthest place inside so you should be you shouldn't be close outside because grab and run your bag your phone etc uh, inside you are more secure likewise if uh, there is a robbery and they get in a way and there's a crossfire crossfire obviously when they are running out they may be a shootout etc so innocent bystanders so just I mean going to every place just a, a proper strategy of preparing awareness like when you carry something uh, how heavy you carry in a lot of bags you cannot do something your bag itself it can be grabbed you've got a lot of packets etc why don't you think of using a trolley if you, if you camouflage your bag is it uh, easy visible you carry in a backpack example so when there's a need carry it in in the in the front of you not in the back somebody can rob you easily uh, when when you get into a bus when you go into uh, a, a mall a shopping center where do you leave your bags how do you carry it etc when you go into a lift if there's a stranger male alone and it's a female do you get in uh, when you exit in and there's a suspicion person outside when you exit in do you exit 
when a suspicious person enters, then uh, do you get off immediately, which you should be doing. If that can't happen, then you're going to push all the buttons on every floor. And you're going to stand next to where the buttons are with your finger on the panic. So, uh, in every area, there are some emergency protocols. So, wherever you are, try to find out where, what are those emergency protocols. So, people are in a habit when they go into a fitting room, they leave their bags unattended, they leave their bags on the trolleys, on the gross, uh, the shopping carts. Uh, they very lax when they open their wallets, it's bulging with credit cards, it's bulging with cash. So we, we, we don't take the time, we're too lazy to, to, to prepare. You're going to a store somewhere else, you can't take the exact amount of money, how much do you need? Get a little bit extra, why are you getting so many bundles of money? Or keep that bundle separately, so you don't need to open your wallet. So if you're in the car, let's say you're going into a store, you know you're going to spend X amount, take that out, put it separately in your pocket in front of you. Well, you don't need to open up your wallet. Well, you don't need to take out your, your wallet, uh, expose your credit card, etc. And uh, being in shape is important. So in these situations, yeah, you need to be fit and healthy, which we discussed previously. And uh, sometimes people don't ever use the public transportation system. So now when you are traveling, where is the public transport uh, systems? If I am in a po position of compromise, I need to get away. I need to go into a public transport system. So you need to learn where are the uh, main areas of public transport, how do I access it, etc. What cards do I need in a situation, in an emergency? Then people sometimes are in the evening, they are tired, they're coming back, or they're traveling long distance, then they sleep, they are fatigued. That's again, putting yourself at risk. Um, so we shouldn't put ourselves in this position. Likewise, uh, if a person is a victim of a carjacking, it's on route, carjacking, the criminal wants the car, so see what's the criminal. Do they want you? Do they want the vehicle? You need to identify, they there to rob you. Uh, possible scenarios. So the mind needs to start working before things happen, not when it happens. When we go to uh, any place, where do we park our cars? It should be closest to our destination. So, and do you always stick to the same parking? Um, when you're at a place, where you have a drink, a milkshake, etc. And uh, you need to go to the bathroom, for example. Do you leave your drinks unattended? So somebody could just drop something without you knowing, etc. So these are simple things which, which can cause uh, long-term repercussions. Uh, have you taught the children not to take anything from a stranger? If somebody had to pick them up, do you have a code word for the kids? Do you have a rust watch with a panic button? In your bags, in your vehicle, in your personal possessions, and it's, it's quite cheap, you have this GPS, uh, 24 hours, 72 hours, 96 hours, GPS trackers. Uh, do you have that? Have you ever thought of your valuable items? So sometimes you're getting something very valuable and it cannot be lost. Have you put any trackers there? Uh, do you give everything in your bag? All your credit cards of your whole life? No, you only need one credit card, so keep one. We're too lazy to, 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 to unpack and pack. So we just want to grab everything, everything ready-made, but ready-made is ready gone as well. So um, you have these body pouches where you wear it on you. So you. If you need to give a lot of things, have it on your body pouch. In your bag, it's just your basic thing. So if it goes, you know, it can go. I don't have my ID copy, I don't have my passport copy, I don't have my Forex, I don't have everything that's so important to me that it'll take me another month or two just to recover and recoup. Some people also, with regards to their phones, they're very negligent. We got everything on our phone, your phone goes, everything's gone. You haven't backed it up, you don't have uh, processes, you just download a lot. So, so be organized uh, in a situation when you have to run. What's the ideal place to run, ideal route? If you see a threat, you shouldn't just run or panic, but slowly uh, disappear and prepare for an offensive threat. Somebody may come and say, you know what, I got $100, I need some change. So you pull out your wallet and uh, another person comes and grabs it. So have you distributed your, your, your money everywhere, like we said, your credit cards? Um, important, carry a bluff purse, a bluff wallet. Just keep some bluff money as well. Somebody comes, grab it and throw it on the floor, take what you want and run. They're not going to run after you, they're going to run after the money, but it's a bluff money. You've just got all small change and a little bit notes to look, make it look like a bundle, etc. 
Likewise, your bluff purse. Um, before you go into a shop, do you uh, check and scan the shop? If a robbery is not in, in progress, uh, somebody stops and asks you for directions. Uh, you look a person to take shortcuts. No. Uh, going through an, uh, a subway place which is not clear. Uh, when you walk in, you should be walking facing traffic. And uh, especially if you are being followed, well, what processes will you take? So these are all important steps we, we, we need to be preparing. We need to be taking lessons from the environment, from the mall. We are living in an era where our life, our family is at risk. Uh, the Amal for today is, Nabi Islam said, Ala ukhbirukum anil ajwadil ajwad. Should I not inform you of the most generous of generous? Allahu al-ajwad, al-ajwad. Allah, wa ana ajwadu waladi Adam. And I'm the most ajwad generous of the progeny of Adam alayhi salam. And who's the most uh, generous after me? Rajulun allama ilman to acquire knowledge. So first, need we need to make is to acquire all the knowledge of Deen, fanashra ilmahu, and then to propagate Deen to the four corners of the earth. Yubathu yom al qiyamati ummatan wahida. Yubathu yom al qiyamati ummatan wahida. He will be resurrected on the day of Qiyama as an entire nation. May Allah subhanahu wa taala give us tawfiq of making amal wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.